So today we're going to be covering boundaries and self-care. And it's just to put out at the beginning that there are some things which affect us, which require more than self-care and self-management. So what I'm going to share is purely for self-care and self-management. It does not replace professional advice. On the Queen's Nurse Institute website, there is a Nurses and Midwives Wellbeing Resource Booklet, which lists lots of various places for support, as well as what's also in your own place of work. Because even though we look after others, that doesn't make us immune to sometimes we need someone to also look after us. What's on the screen there is just a little postcard that we put together around tips for setting boundaries. And what I hope today is going to do is help create a space to begin to reflect on how much space do I give myself. Next slide, thanks. We'll touch a bit more on the professional boundaries that we all know that we have um, in place that's there to protect the people that we serve. But sometimes we can neglect our own boundaries in terms of protecting ourselves. So we're very good at protecting others, but we also sometimes need to learn to protect ourselves. And we all need room to move and breathe. And what we're going to do now is watch a little video, which I hope offers some inspiration of some self-care ideas, but also provides a balance about sometimes we just need to get out and just experience nature in the raw. And sometimes we need to get home and curate in and create that private space for ourselves. So I hope this little video that we're going to show in a moment offers some ideas to do that and enjoy. Thanks, Tasha. What's that got to do with getting fitter? This is one in a series of videos to look at the things that we have in Scotland that we can embrace that can improve our well-being. And the first thing we're going to look at is the curry. ways, Curie is taking pleasure in the simple things. Visit a library, borrow a book, even a talking book if you fancy having a wee story read to you and snuggle up in a comfy warm blanket with a cup of tea and even just for 15 minutes embrace the moment. Now we know the weather in Scotland can be wild even in summer so embrace it. Wrap up warm in a cold day and go out for a walk, even for a wee while. If you have a dog, enjoy sharing it with them. Maybe even visit a park or beach, somewhere you can both experience nature in the raw. And when you get home, snuggle up with a warm blanket and a bowl of homemade soup. You can see there's a lot of snuggling goes on with the curry. Have a cosy home. Now keeping the house warm when money's tight can be a challenge. So having warm snuggles, using colours which suggest warmth. Maybe even invest in a wee salt lamp which can glow a lovely orange colour. Or download an app to your TV if it's a smart one, showing a log fire crackling. Or even invest in a wee electric heater with a coal or log effect, again to create that feeling of warmth. When it's really cold, maybe focus on one room in the house being the cosy room, so heat can be concentrated in that area. Aye, Kurian can be sharing a cuddle as well. Many of us like a cuddle. Might be with another person, might be with our pets. It's suggested stroking a cat or dog has real health benefits for us as well as being good for our pets. There are some suggestions even watching videos of cats can be good for us as it boosts energy and positivity. Or why not make a nest of cushions and blankets with the kids, get out a board game, bowl of popcorn and for a wee while just enjoy the fun of being together. Nowhere in Scotland are we far from the great outdoors, 
from Loch Lomond to the Camps of Hills, the West Highland Way, Cairngorms, Glencoe and so much more. Check out special deals on buses and trains to explore the outdoors around you or borrow or hire a bike, maybe even join a cycle club or a ramblers group. Take a warm flask of soup and some sandwiches and appreciate how much of nature we still have around us. Getting away from it all can help give us perspective. So enjoy the variations in the natural world in Scotland. It can sometimes help take us away from our troubles, even for a wee while. The openness in space can help give us perspective just to be, not to be trying or doing just to be. Walking up a mountain or hill or whatever you can manage depending on your fitness and health, listening to the silence and seeing the world spread out around us can help recharge our batteries and heal, perhaps, the emotional aches we have as we realise we are connected to something so much more than ourselves. If walking is a challenge, we have many lochs in Scotland. Just sit and watch the sun reflect off the water, listen to the wind in the trees and realise we all have a wee bit of paradise on our doorsteps. Money can be tight, sometimes even trying to make sure the children are fed is a challenge. Curie is also about how do we protect ourselves and our family to feel safe and cosy, even when life is challenging. Keeping an area of the house cosy, making wholesome warm meals which don't cost a lot, using free local facilities like libraries and local community resources can help build a community cuddle where we can all feel safer and cosier and have a sense of balance and well-being. Kuri is also about caring for ourselves, each other and the environment. Together, we can all help build a cosier world for all. So I hope as well as demonstrating some ideas of things that can be good for our well-being, that video also demonstrates the need why we need boundaries. Because if we don't manage to create boundaries, all it becomes is work. And we don't have that space when we get home that we just relax and unwind because we're either bringing work home with us, thinking about work, or just lying, staying into space because we're so exhausted by the pressures of work that we just don't have the time or energy for anything else. So it matters for our well-being that we also, as well as having professional boundaries to protect others, that we also create boundaries to protect ourselves. And I've included this quote from the Nursing Standard because the extract from this clearly says as well as protecting patients and the public maintaining professional boundaries is vital for a nurse if you want to avoid burnout and enjoy a lengthy career and with all the challenges that has been with COVID it has very difficult sometimes to maintain those professional boundaries because at the end of the day we are human too and our compassion and empathy towards the pain of others sometimes can mean that we become overwhelmed by their sadness. So there's also having those boundaries where we care and are compassionate towards others, but we keep ourselves safe um, so that we have energy to look after the next person we're going to care for, but also so we have energy to look after ourselves. And we also have energy to spend with the people in our lives that matter because it doesn't mean because we do this for a living, we don't also have caring responsibilities, worries about our own or our loved one's health. So professional boundaries matter to protect the public. Personal boundaries matter to protect ourselves. Next slide. There's no two ways about it. When you're busy, it can be really difficult to actually have something as simple as a regular lunch break. So the, the plan may be that there is lunch from whatever time to whatever time. However, that can get used to check emails, to 
fin finish writing a report that you haven't had time to do because you've been doing other things. To catch up with colleagues, not to read the newspaper and share the horoscopes, because I don't remember the last time people did that. I mean, even if you don't believe in the horoscopes, that used to be a thing over lunch. Sit down, what's in the papers, check the horoscopes and just have a general chin wag. Nope, a lot of the time, unless you make a conscious effort to boundary that break time, ends up catching up with colleagues you've not had a chance to see to talk about work. So when we're busy, no two ways about it, really more difficult to set those boundaries, but it's when we're busy, it becomes even more important. And we're all different, we work in different environments. So it's finding something that works for us. But the more we don't have a lunch break, the more we use our lunch breaks, I'm only using that as one example, is extra work time, the more that becomes the norm and the harder it is to reclaim that. Excuse me. So even if it's only 15, 20 minutes uninterrupted time, and it's a shell and be more than that, that matters. Um, and it's about how we create that space, how we also put limits on others' expectations of us. Because when you're in a caring job and in a caring role, sometimes it's very difficult to think about me. And part of the whole boundaries for self-care is that it's okay to think about me sometimes. Because if we don't think about me and we collapse, then we're not in a place to do anything for anybody else. But when people think, oh, it, you know, I'm going to talk to you about how I'm feeling or I'm, I need your support for this, then it can be really hard if you had planned to go a 15 minute walk to then go, okay, I've got 15 minutes. Well, actually, you don't have 15 minutes. That 15 minutes was for your self-care. So boundaries is also about, I hear what you're saying, and they are definitely, we need to talk about that. And it's finding where's another way we can program that conversation in. I'm not saying that's easy, because it's easier to start with tight boundaries and then relax them than if the boundaries are pushed to the limit and then pull them back. But if you find that boundaries is impacting on the time you've got for you as well as everyone else, then it's time to start having a wee think. Next slide, please. What can also happen is if we do make ourselves constantly available as well as becoming exhausted, because no matter how strong a battery is, it has a limit, it can only put so much energy out before it needs topped up, but we can actually start to feel compassion fatigue. We can actually move from caring so much that it hurts, that like a hammer constantly hitting your leg, that leg becomes numb. Emotional hammers constantly hitting that is eventually we can become numb. Um, and that can make us feel even more guilty and we push ourselves even harder and then we feel even more guilty about creating that self-care time. So boundaries are a way of saying where I am in the world. This is what I will do for others. And the nature of the job that we're in is that we will do for others. But this is also what I'll do for myself. So that having that time, and it doesn't need to be hours, great if it's hours, Five and 10 minutes here and there can make a huge difference to recharge our energy levels, to help us remain compassionate to the work that we're doing, but not to end up feeling burnt out. And if we are already feeling we're on our knees, then now more than ever is the time that we need to start setting some boundaries around. This is time that I need to recharge. Next slide. It's amazing how we are so kind to others and yet we can be so neglectful of ourselves. So it matters to give permission to be kind to you. That sounds like common sense. Well, of course I give myself permission to be kind to me. But one of the things I would invite you to reflect on after today's session is, what have you done today that's kind to you? What do you have planned for later today that's kind to you? And maybe even just get in the habit every day of saying, so what am I going to do today that's kind to me? I'm sharing this, so I'll give an example. I have found Inspector Lindley Mysteries on box sets. Now, I know this is not climbing up hills and listening to Disturbed. It's Inspector Lindley Mysteries, but I really like them. So I have downloaded loads of these. And one of the things I'll do to be kind to me is to gather the cats up, which doesn't take much persuasion, and watch an episode of the Inspector Lindley Mysteries. 
And then at some point over the long weekend, I'm going to get out and do some gardening, which is kind to me, kind to the planet. It's small things and it's things that work for you. And that's one of the good things about the lunchtime sessions is because a lot of ideas are being offered. And if you think mm, that doesn't appeal to me, that's fine. Keep looking until you find something that does because we're all different. And eventually we do find something that we think, you know, that only takes three minutes. That only takes six minutes. I can create a boundary for three minutes to call my own. That's kind to me. I can create a boundary for six minutes. And once we do that, it can become 10 minutes, 15, an hour. Who knows? At some point, it might even be a whole day, a whole day to do whatever we want. And if that's a whole day of watching Inspector Lindley with the cats, eating chocolate, having the hobby, bringing assorted hot drinks and things as I need replenished, <laughs> then that's something to aim for. We all look for something that works for us. Next slide. <coughs> Thank you. There are rules and regulations we have to follow, and we know this from a nurse's code of conduct, but we also have our own personal rule book. And it's sometimes helpful to have a look at that and see, does that include self-care? So a very long story cut and short. It'd been a terrible summer, as it can often be, and hadn't been out for ages. And my friend who um, worked in paediatrics, nursing, had children of her own, um, so she had changed her working patterns. We hadn't been doing very much because of the weather and so on and so forth. And it was a glorious Sunday. So we stayed quite close. So I gave her a bell and said, it's a great day. Let's get a picnic together. Take the kids and go up Mugdor Park. Can't, I've got the ironing to do. And I was like, no, no, no. It's a great day. We're going up Mugdor Park. Nope, get the ironing to do. It. It's Sunday. Because in her personal rule book, the ironing was done on a Sunday. So we had a little conversation about ironing, chucking it in the tumble dryer, letting the creases come out itself versus going to the picnic up Mugdor Park. And eventually the picnic won. But that took a huge conversation because in boundaries of time, this is the ironing time. <laughs> this is not the picnic time. So sometimes we need to be flexible. There are some rules and codes of conduct we have to follow, but there are other things as well. And it's worth looking at what's my own personal rule book for life? And do those rules actually work for me? Next slide. Said before, Find a balance that works for you as well as everyone else. If it is all give and no take, eventually we will begin to burn out, to feel exhausted, perhaps even to feel resentful because we wonder, why is this for me? What balance looks like to you will be unique to you. So again, it's something to reflect on. What, is my, what does a balanced life look for me? How, how do I know I've got balance in my life? How do I know when I'm putting energy out, I'm also doing things to top my energy levels back up? And again, on the QNS website, Cope Scotland website, Capacitor website, there's many ideas that you might want to visit and have a look at. Plus what you know yourself, you do this for others. So it's applying what you do for others to yourself. Next slide. So I would like to close with three invitations to reflect on whether your boundaries are working for you. And if they are, congratulations. Share what you're doing with others. Maybe even do one of these sessions. Build on what is working and find new ways to create more balance if this is meaning for you. And I'll finish with a wee quote. Can compassionate people ask for what they need? They say no when they need to. And when they say yes, they mean it. They're compassionate because their boundaries keep them out of resentment. He's all doing an amazing job. You're all wonderful human beings. And the reason why I'm keeping saying this is to remind you that you matter too. And it's all right to make time for you. Thanks for listening.